me, madam. Yes, Grove. Now, what is it? Mrs. Quantock on the telephone, ma'am. She wishes to know if she may come over for a moment. Oh, dear. I do wish people would leave me alone. Tell her yes, of course, Grosvenor. In half an hour. Very good, madam. Uno, do it, Uno, do it, Wait a minute, Daisy. Oh. <laughs> How tartum. I'd gone through nine hoops, and I missed quite an easy one. I rather wish you hadn't called me just then, Daisy. I just wanted to tell you, Georgie, that Lucia's agreed to see me. I'm going over to see her right this minute. Well, I wish you luck. Well, I'm sure I can persuade her this time. It's months now since her husband died. She can't stay in mourning forever, Georgie. She won't budge, Daisy. Even I haven't succeeded. Well, I'll let you know how I get on. Mm -hmm. Oh! <sighs> Don't forget that you and I have got to practice the lighting of Sir Francis Drake. Oh, practice on the arm of the sofa, Daisy. <laughs> I shall have no shoulder left. Oh! Fudge. <coughs> this is Mrs. Quantock speaking. Now, look here, you chaps. My Elizabethan fate is not very far away, and I don't see many of you working very hard. Uh, what was that, Overton? I just said uh, particularly nasty weather, Mum. That's not what it sounded like to me. Now, it's a lovely day, and insolence will not get the Golden Hind built, now will it? Then get on with it, please. Mrs. Quantock, ma'am. Dear Daisy, how very pleasant. It's been such a long time. <laughs> well, we all know you haven't been up to it. What was that? Yeah. Well, since Peppino's passing. Mm. Nine months. Oh, Daisy, dear. You didn't come here to talk about my late husband. No. <laughs> no. So I'll come straight to the point. And always best, don't you think? Do sit down. <laughs> For a minute. Thank you. Now, we all know that the idea for the Elizabethan fate was yours in the first place. Mm. Mea culpa. What was that, dear? Italian. I cannot deny it. Oh, Queen Elizabeth's visit to the Golden Hind, I mean, or all your idea. Mm. Is, um, Georgie still going to be Sir Francis Drake? <laughs> Not yet knighted. What was that, dear? Not yet knighted till this bit. What bit is that, dear? Queen Elizabeth went down to Deptford to the Golden Hind in order to knight him. Of course, Daisy. We all know that. Well... Uh, when I was elected to take your place, I... What better choice, Daisy, oh. dear? <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. Aww. But since you're so recovered, mm. couldn't we persuade you, as Pepino would have put it, to come amongst us again? I'm such a Philip you'd give the whole thing. Daisy, dear, I don't think I could face coming out of my own house in silks and jewels and leading the procession without... My Peppino, my Raleigh by my side. Oh, b b but Lucia, dear. Uh, um, yeah. Perhaps I should make an effort. Oh, we wouldn't have thought of asking you to play Queen Elizabeth. I mean, under the circumstances, it would be far too great a strain on you. How kind. Oh, no. We were thinking of asking you to play Drake's wife. I mean, she just comes forward for a moment, makes her curtsy to the Queen, and then walks slowly backwards. Walks backwards? into a chorus of ladies in waiting and halberdiers and such things. Mm. Sweet of you to suggest it, Daisy, dear, but um, quite too much for me. Mm. Backwards. Uh, let me see. What historical character are you to represent? <laughs> They've all insisted that I should play the Queen. <laughs> Who is they, dear? The committee, of course, dear. Uh, <laughs> of course, and of course you can... Um... Manage it? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We've already elaborated the scene on the Golden Hind quite a bit. Elaborate? 
did. How interesting. Yes, we're going to have a fire on the poop of the ship. Or is it the prow? Well, it depends which end of the ship you mean, dear. Well, the behind bit, the, the, the stern, that, that, that's the poop, isn't it? Mm. Well, we're going to have a fire and we're going to roast a sheep on it. Mm, I wouldn't. Half of it will be cinders and the rest, blood. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we'll roast it first at the um, Ambermere Arms and then just hang it over the fire at the Golden Hind. <laughs> of course. Just to get a little kippered in the smoke. And then I night drake. That's Georgia, of course. And then I sneak away into the inn to change into my riding habit. And then I sally forth on my white palfrey. <laughs> oh, no moment. Daisy, where have you found a white palfrey, Mr. Beresford? Mr. The milk cart. Oh, of course. That dear little white pony. Then I make my speech to the troops at Tilbury. Oh, dear. How far away it all seems. Oh, it won't always be so, dear. Your joy in life will revive again. Mm, I doubt it at this rate. <laughs> Must be off. Yeah. So sorry you feel you can't join us. Of luck. Morning, ma'am. Now, it is quite clear, isn't it, the role that you're to undertake in my Elizabethan fate? Well, to begin with, you'll be borrowing my Charlie here to be a ball free. Oh, a ball free, quite so. Yeah, and, and then I'm to be dressed up in some sort of trappings, and when signalled to, I'll go down on one knee, and I'll be practising, Mrs. Quantock, and I cry say, God save the King! Queen. Queen, Mrs. Quantock? But, but, but it's the King now, George V. Yes, yes, quite, Mr. Beresford. Please do get up. It's an Elizabethan fate, and you're to ask God to look after Queen Elizabeth. Oh, of course. Good Queen Bess. <laughs> exactly. God save the Queen! <laughs> yes, good morning, Mr. Beresford. <laughs> Mr. Pilsen, but you did ask me to remind you when it had struck seven. Well, it... Oh. oh I'm sorry, Fogian. Thank you so much. I was quite carried away. I was wondering, sir, mm -hmm. seeing as you'll be out for the evening... Well, I shall be back later. Uh, no, sir, but I was wondering if I might step out for an hour or so. Well, yes, I don't see why not. Oh, thank yes, you, course. sir. Yes, just, just for an hour or so. Yes. Well, oh, dear. Thank you, Fulgian. Good evening, Edward. Evening, sir. Yes. Grovener. Uh, uh, yes, well, good evening. Sorry. I, sorry. But I tell you, I saw them. Your cabman and my full jam. But, George, here, even servants have a right to a private life. Well, of course, of course. But if I were to lose her. Oh, no, let us cross that ponty when we come to it. But who would darn my socks or dust my people? Now, uh, George, I have turned to, turned to, to talk to you about. Oh, Daisy, this morning, I expect. Oh. Oh, that's non important. Oh, I wish you'd take the fate over again and be the queen yourself. I shan't be here, Georgina O'Meal. But where will you be? I caught sight of something in the Times this morning. Now, mm -hmm. Georgie, here. Yeah. Look at this. Where? There. A delightful house to let for the months of July and August in the village of Tilling on Sea in Sussex. Mm -hmm. But why, Lucia? Why? Read on, Macduff. Um, it... Mallards. Ma no. Doesn't that ring a bell? Yes, of course. Miss Mapp. 
She stayed here at the Andener Arms a few summers ago. That's right, Miss Mapp. She came to my garden party. That's the one? Yeah, that was the summer you invented saying Au Reservoir instead of Au Revoir, and she stole it and kept on using it. Georgie, mm? your memory's marvellous. Oh, now, listen. You. I want you to drive there with me tomorrow to look at the house. Oh, Tilling must be nearly a hundred miles away. Never mind. We'll spend the night at an inn there. Oh. But what about the fate? Now, Georgie, be frank. What have you been doing with yourself since I have been... Well, out of circulation? Nothing very much. I haven't sketched for months. Oh, he's back again now. And we'll scold you. Very, very much. Me idle boy. Oh, how nice it all is again. <laughs> I need change. Georgie, change of air, change of scene, change of people. Oh, good, good news. <laughs> You're beginning to be alive again. Georgie, un peu de musica before dinner. Yes, the greatest fun. There was a Mozart forehand a duet we used to play, mm -hmm. shall we? Wrestle with it again. Oh, yeah, but you mustn't scold me if I play badly. Months since I looked at it. Mm, me too. Uh, shall I take the um, treble, Georgie? A little easier on my poor fingers. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, well, now. <laughs> uh, off to Tilling in the morning. Uno, due, three. Straight up to the next corner, turn right past the wee cock on the hill, and it's right there, is Mr. Snaps. Thank you, thank you very much. You Drive so on, nice. Cadman. Well, thank you. How odd. He told me where the house was before I even asked. Funny accent he had, didn't he? Mm. Little tipsy, I thought. Scotch, perhaps. Or both, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Chimney. Oh, it's all crooked. Oh, and I the cobbles <laughs> with grass and dandelions growing between <gasps> the church tower. Oh, oh. my dear. Jo Georgie, where's the front door? It, through here, I think. Through the arch. Yes, it is. Yes, it is through here. Oh, I'm oh come it. along, my dear. Yes. This is through here. Oh, thank you, Captain. Is Miss Mapp at home? I think she is expecting me. Mrs. Lucas. Oh, please, step inside, madam. Sir? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dear Mrs. Lucas, <laughs> no need for introduction. I hope you receive But how well I remember you from your lovely rhythm. I, I saw your advertisement. And Mr. Pilsen, your yeah. wonderful garden party. Tea at once with us, please. Do come in this way. Oh, perhaps my chauffeur. Your chauffeur, of course. Mrs. Lucas is chauffeur with us. Mind you take care of him. Such a long drive, but what a heavenly day for it. No, no, Mr. Pilsen, you mustn't look at my little daubs, for I remember what a great artist you are yourself. Oh, well, I, think I got your telegram about an hour ago, but I clapped my hands at the idea of having such a tenant as Mrs. Lucas of Rizm. Now, shall we take a peep at the garden first? Oh, yes. Yes, how nice. Very modest. Three quarters of an acre at most. My little Eden, I call it. So small, but so well beloved. Enchanting. Sweet roses. Oh, look. 
for to sell butterfly. Oh. Rather a nice pair it is. In my garden at Rism. And here is my little secret garden. When I'm out here, I mustn't be disturbed for anything less than a telegram. Oh. The tower of the church, keeping watch, I always say, over my little nook and taking care of me, otherwise not overlooked at all. Oh, Georgie, isn't it sweet? Mm. Un giardino segreto. Molto bello. Oh, how lovely to be able to speak Italian like that. Now, before tea, we've just got time for a quick tour of the house. So pleased you like my little... Giardino Segreto, was it? I must remember that beautiful phrase. <laughs> so, that's about it as the saying goes. Perfect, just perfect. <laughs> yes, Dickie Day, very charming. I am utterly charmed with the house. And how much? I mean, what will you be asking for the two months' rental? Fifteen guineas a week. That would include the use of my piano, a rewarding instrument by Blumenfeld. Ah, oh, not a make that I am acquainted with. No, they are rather rare. It belonged to my mother. And, of course, flowers for the house would also be included. Miss Matt, I will take the house for the two months. So comfortable, bellissima. I'm sure you will be as pleased with it as I shall be with my tenant. Oh, grazie tante. Of course, the 15 guineas a week would not include the wages of my gardener. Coplin's such a nice, steady man. I understand. Nor garden produce, not the fruits. No? No, nor the vegetables. Oh, really? No, uh, I already have an arrangement for their disposal. And Withers has brought us our tea. <laughs> or, how do we say it in Italy? Tea. Really? Do sit down. Now, Mr. Filson, be frank. Would you fancy a little whiskey and soda? I shan't be shocked. Major Benji, uh, I should say Major Flint, often enjoys one on a hot day. Very old friend of mine. Oh, thank you, Miss Mapp. No, this is admirable. <laughs> and Withers has picked us some strawberries from my little plot. Such a year it's been for strawberries. Mm. Tell me, Miss Mapp, who was the clergyman who directed us to your house? Oh, that would be our dear padre, Reverend Bartlett. He's Scottish. Birmingham. I beg your pardon. He comes from Birmingham. It's one of his little foibles to speak like that, but a very good bridge player when he can spare the time, which he usually can. You play bridge, of course, Mrs. Lucas. I do indeed, and it has been said. I do so hope you will both be comfortable at the Trader's Arms. I insisted on the best accommodation. And you must meet our little circle of friends. Dear Diver Plasto, whom we're all devoted to. Christened Godiva, such a handicap. And quaint Irene Coles, devoted to her art. Paints strange pictures. Men and women with no clothes on. One has to be careful to knock when one goes to see quaint Irene in her studio. And Mrs. Wise, M.B.E. and her husband, Sable. And a Rolls Royce, and Mr. Wise wears a monocle. Dear Susan, very insufficient. Betsy wearing a far coat in the middle of summer. <laughs> and a very good one, too. Yes, it was. Mm. Mr. and Mrs. Wise. You're in the way. I'm oh, terribly sorry I didn't see you. <laughs> That's quite all right. Oh, thank you, you Cadman. Oh, oh, George, you pick me. It's absolutely delightful. I know who you are. You're Mrs. Lucas, and that chat's Mr. Pilson. It seems the whole of Tilling knows who we are. By Matt's house, isn't it? Summer rental. That's quite great. I'm Irene Coles. Known as quaint Irene by all and sundry. Well, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> uh, Georgino, Carl, I 
should go into the inn and make sure of the reservations. Gadman, see to the luggage, please. Yes, Mr. Pilson is also an artist. Is he? Go along, Georgie. <laughs> Oh, I see. It's an absolutely wonderful subject for the brush, isn't it? The old inn. The inn isn't important. Oh, sorry, I thought that must be what you were depicting. Good God, no. May one be permitted to glance at your back? Why not? Let's be kind of you. Thank you. Good, isn't it? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's very uh, modern. Shows you what maypoles were all about. No, no, no. Impossible. But I understood a double room for Mr and Mrs Lucas. No. I am Mrs Lucas, and my friend is Mr Pilson. Well, I'm known as being as broad-minded as the next person, so Lee said soon as mended. I have never heard any... A double room is out of the question. So you'll be wanting two single rooms? Certainly. Two single rooms. I'm sure that can be managed at a pinch. Well, everything in order, is it? Yes, Georgie, everything. Well, just a silly mix-up, Mr Lucas. I mean, Mr... Uh, you see, I thought it's how you were man and wife. Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> yes, um, please have the cases taken up to the rooms. Mr Pilson and I want to see more of the town while it is still light. Come along, Georgie. Thank you very much. being waved. Some sort of signal. Don't look now. No. Just walk away. Yes. Any luck? I think I shall tease you both. No point. We can tell from your face you've let it, or it'll be all horribly pursed up. Yeah, quaint Irene, if you know I've let it, why bother to come? Because I was hoping for a cocktail and because we want to know the price you screwed her up to. The price, sir? What's she gonna pay you? The damage. The dibs. You were going to ask 12 guineas. Mrs. Lucas closed instantly with the price I suggested. But what price, Map? I'm not sure, Diver, that that's any business of yours. Now, wait a minute, Map. It was agreed weeks ago that if you let Mallard's, you would take Diver's house at eight guineas a week. That's right. Quite so. And she would take mine at five, I would take my friend the lobster fisherman's cottage for two, and he would take some sort of shanty on the dunes for no rent at all. None of this is disputed, quaint Irene. If you got more than twelve guineas from Mrs Lucas, then going down the ladder, it ought to be on a sliding scale. I don't remember that ever being mentioned. If you've made her pay through the nose, then Diver here should make you pay through the nose and me, Diver, for mine. Equality, fraternity and nosality. Thank you. 
Thank you, dear. Sweet music. Are you charging Lucas extra for use of a fine old instrument? No, darling, I am not. Oh, well, if that's all you've got to say and I don't get a cocktail, I'll be off to cook my supper. Drop in at my studio tomorrow if you want to see far the greater part of a well-made man. Au revoir. Poor Irene. Very coarse side to her nature, I'm afraid. Such a contrast to dear Mrs. Lucas. Who's the man with her? Mr. Pilsen. They're staying at the Trader's Arms tonight and go back to Rizm tomorrow. What? Staying together? Stavid, dear old friends though we are, I should be sorry to have a mind like yours. I only meant that it was rather a daring thing to do, Elizabeth. Anything more came from your mind, not mine. I accept your apology, Diva. But I haven't apologised, and I won't. It's for you to do that. Picky, dear. Good evening. It is. It isn't. It must be Mr. and Mrs. Lucas. My name is Flint, Major Flint, and this is Mr. Wise. Golfers, too, are we? <laughs> but there's slight error, sir. This is Mrs. Lucas. Did I not just pronounce that? <laughs> but my name is Pilsen. Good Lord, you don't say. Oh dear, oh dear, have I put my foot in it? A foolish mistake on the part of the hotel. No matter. Charm to make both your acquaintances. Mrs. Lucas. Mr. Pilsen. Ooh. Of them. Um, is home, I believe. Please, uh, join us for a pre-prandial aperitif. Oh, too kind. A Georgino, mm -hmm. un aperitif. Yes, it's too kind. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Lucas. A glass of sweet sherry. Oh. Yes, and I'll have that. Uh, well, a gin and French would be very welcome. <laughs> sweet sherry. Gin and French. Be with you in a jiffy. Thank you. Please, be seated. <laughs> Thank you. No, forgive me, Major. This is very nice. This is very nice. Lovely, George. Way high! Yeah. Hindustani is the major second language. Served. In India, you know. So, you are to be the summer tenant of Mallards, Mrs. Lucas. Yes. Miss Mapp and I have come to a satisfactory understanding. The little cottage opposite. Also for rent. You own it. My wife does. Well, do you know, sir? I'm very tempted to make inquiries about your wife's cottage. Sure, <laughs> What a bold idea. Yes, I would want you about it. May I suggest that we meet tomorrow morning at the house agents, if that is convenient for you? Oh, very convenient. Way high. Way high, I say. Then, at Emma, then. At, uh, Woolgar and Pipster. Way high! And so to bed. Buona notte, caro. A domani. Good night, you, Charles. I shall see you in the morning.
damned attractive woman. I'd say. Mrs. Lucas? Mm. The same. Certainly knows how many beans make five. And Mr. Pilson? Charming manners. Well dressed. Oh. Not too sure about his rug, though. Say again, please. His rug. Veal cutlet. His toupee. Goodness, I never noticed. Ah. Died with all. Here's a subject for debate. What is? Does he take it off? Or does he leave it on? When they're at a bit of a folder all? Folder all? Don't follow. One o'clock, Major. Afraid the bar is closed. This country's going to the dogs. And while I think of it, how many beans do make five? in my little cottage. Well, it was I who expressed the interest, Mrs. Wax. Is it still on the books, Mr. Woolgar? Mallard's cottage? I believe so, Mrs. Wise. Oh, well, I would be interested in renting it for the months of July and August. Perfect. Have you seen it over? No, but we were very naughty last night and peeked through the windows. <laughs> I'm flying a Bletner house, Mr. Woolgar, so you can cross it off your books. Oh, very satisfactory, Mrs. Blasto. Hello, Susan. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I, I will 
show you Mallard's cottage without delay. I think we can all manage to squeeze into the Royce. So, Georgie. Yes. We are both settled for the summer. Oh, so it would appear. Yes. That woman who dashed in and out of Woggle and Pipsqueaks. <laughs> Woggle and Pipstow. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wise yes. told me um, she's a widow. Oh, look, a cow. And she wondered whether Benji, that's Major Flint, will ever marry. She hinted that he was keen on Miss Mapp. Keen as mustard was the way she put it. Look, isn't that a rainbow? It hasn't been raining, Georgie. Georgie, we must have ickle talk before we get back to Rism. Oh, look, a haystack. Pay attention, Georgie. How long have we been friends? Well, look, it, uh... Longer than either of us care to remember. Happy years, Georgie, bringing their sheaves with them. And now we're both getting on. Both alone in the world. But people like us can look forward to middle age without any qualms. Tranquility comes with advancing years. And whatever Freud may say, we are strong enough to draw a veil of it. You see, our friendship is just perfect as it is. Oh, how sweet of you to put it like that. <laughs> Of course, it's quite impossible to think that we... <laughs> and as you say, we're both getting on a bit. <laughs> well, I am anyway. <laughs> no, the quality of our friendship is perfect. Good, nothing more need be said. Oh, look, a seagull. <laughs> I'll do it like that. Then like that. Then I'll do that. Well, it's a miracle. My shoulders are still extremely sore. All oh, that tarsome mighty. Do you know an aperitivo? Oh, what a oh. Excuse me, madam. Mrs. Quantock is at the door and wonders if she could have a word with you. Of course. Ask her to come in. What on earth can she want? Oh, a number of things I should imagine. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Quantock, ma'am. Yeah, do come in. Would you care for an aperitivo? Oh, no, 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 no. I'll come straight to the point, if I may. Of course. It's about the fate. The fate, dear? Oh, now, Lucia, don't go on pretending you know nothing about it, going about rhythm as if we were all invisible. Mm? Isn't all going well, dear? No, it is not, and you know it. But what can I do to help? Well, perhaps I can make a suggestion. Perhaps you could be some kind of producer, Lucia. A producer? What exactly would that entail? Well, you know, um, show us how to do it. But would I be any good at it? Oh, oh yes, yes, you would save the day. How you all work, Lee. Please say yes, Lucia. Very well. Now, come along, everybody. Are we ready for our rehearsal? Now, uh, see, there are times I can move them. Spread right across here. Right over there, that's it. Now, ladies, ladies in waiting, are we ready for the arrival of our queen? Excellent. Now, we start with the arrival of the queen on the deck of the Golden Hind. So beautifully built, you know. Francis Drake is already aboard. Mr. Pelson, yes. Drake is already aboard. Now, the chorus. Down, 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 down. Dilly, dilly, down. Off we go. Come along, Georgie, dear. Yes, sorry, I'm mm. so Come along, my dear. I know all about your shoes now. The Queen approaches. The Queen approaches. Open out a little halberdiers so we can glimpse the
the queen from the front. Crescendo choir. A little quicker, Daisy dear, we're all ready. A little slower. Lent Walk at your own queenly pace, dear. More royal. Start basting, cooks. Oh. Gently, gently. Basting, not bashing. Sailors, horn pipe. Dawn skis. Oh, dear. To hell with Spain! Not now, Mr. Beresford. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Oh! No! Oh, what have you done? Jolly well, father, you right. One little suggestion, Daisy. May I be queen just for a moment or two to show you the effect I want you to get from the others, I mean. Yes, no, 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 no. Now, over here. Georgie, stage left, please. Come along. Hurry along, please. Now, chorus. Down, 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 dilly, dilly, down. Mr. Beresford, no! Mr. Beresford! He's given his palfrey its oats! <laughs> I do not think that our monarch would find crude laughter very apposite. I must remind you that this is a royal pageant. Now, all together, God save the Queen! God save the Queen! Georgie! Yes? You come to me? Yes? Louder, louder! God oh, save the Queen! Queen. Kneel. And kiss my hand. Yes. Yes. You see, dear. Rich in romance, in majesty. Now let us go back and do it once again. God save the Queen! Too late, Mr. Beresford. Daisy, dear, you must mind your train or you'll trip on it and end up in the pond. May I kick it? Certainly not. You are a queen, not a pantomime dame. Is there anything else that strikes you? Just one or two tiny little things. Your speech to the troops, I couldn't hear very well. And your gestures, were well, they're not quite majestic enough. You must be a Tudor, the great foe of Spain, yet tender, the mother of your people. Sh shall I um, show you what I mean? Do you have the speech there? <clears throat> I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a prince, and of a prince of England too, and think it foul scorn that France or Spain or any other prince of Europe should dare invade the borders of my realm. Lucia, I want to hand the whole thing over to you. What whole thing, dear? Well, the fate, of course. What else? <laughs> Already producing it, as they say. Yeah, but I think Daisy means. Yes, I do. Well, I must be very dense, but thou speakest in riddles. You must be queen. What was that? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. You must be queen. Can't be done unless you're the queen. <laughs> Oh, it is good of you. Oh, thank you, Lucia. The day is saved. No time to waste, then. Daisy, what would you be?
be now? Anything you suggest, dear. What about dear George's wife? Dear Georgie? Drake's wife? Not a big part, I know, but so important in that one moment, you have to portray all the devotion of the women of England for their queen. What do you say, dear? Now, let us begin. I have just stepped onto the golden hind. Now, you go behind that screen, dear. That one? Mm-hmm, yes. Now. Now, come tripping out towards me, full of awe, full of reverence. Oh, Daisy, dear, I use the word tripping in its Elizabethan sense, not a literal one. Uh, now, curtsy. Then you retreat backwards. So, so, and so. Mind the screen, dear. Welcome back, Your Majesty. <laughs>